What's going on everybody? So I'm brewing a um, whiskey barrel stout today and so um, I just wanted to go ahead and brew this because I've had this particular ingredient kit sitting around the house for quite a while and I need to brew it. Um, this is going to be a fantastic beer. I think great for the winter time. Um, we're looking at a kind of a woody bourbon barrel oak flavor in the beer and how this is going to work is that we'll mash in the grains and I've already got the uh, restart going on here. Get this thing up to a 158 strike temp. Mash in the grains and we're going to let it mash at about 154. So let's talk about what's in this beer right quick uh, while we're at it. Um, we got eight pounds of pale malt two row, German two row. Um, two pounds, eight ounces of Munich malt. And we have 10 ounces of caramel crystal malt, 60 love of uh, Eight ounces of chocolate malt, six ounces of roasted barley, and two ounces of black patent malt. And uh, this is gonna be a nice roasty, just, Fantastic stout. I haven't made a stout in a long time, so I'm really excited to make this particular one. Um, especially the bourbon factor. It's just going to go. It's just going to be one of those great wintertime warm beers uh, that you just kind of chill at a fireside with. It's a great beer. Um, you can really have them year round. I like my stouts in the wintertime more these days. So um, also. For the yeast, we're using Safeville USO4. It's a dry yeast. And uh, just gonna sprinkle it right on top when it's done. And I actually have, I have this little brew vent yeast nutrient here. And uh, that will go in the boil 15 minutes prior to I turn off the burner or element in this case, since I'm electric brewing. <laughs> the, hop, the hops, the uh, hops, real simple hop schedule. We're using Brewer's Gold. It's going to be an ounce for 60 minutes and then an ounce for five minutes. And uh, that's going to kind of give us Brewer's Gold's going to give us some of that earthy, spicy tone to the beer. It's going to be great. Um, we're not looking for a real aromatic approach for the hop schedule on this. We're looking for just more flavor and a little bitterness. Um, so this beer is going to have a very chocolatey, roasty, roasted coffee smell to it, uh, along with a little bit of that alcoholic tinge from the bourbon. It's gonna be a fantastic beer. So, anyways, once we get up to temp here, we'll we'll put the sucker to, to work and get some mash going. I almost forgot to mention, um, what's gonna give this bourbon barrel stout its unique bourbon oak barrel flavor? is we're gonna do a little trick of the trade that homebrewers do. I've got some oak chips here, and what we're gonna do with these oak chips later on um, is I'm gonna soak these in my favorite bourbon or any kind of straight bourbon. I'm, I'm not gonna do a sour bourbon, I'm gonna do a straight bourbon like uh, just a gin bean or something. I'm gonna soak these in there until all the chips collapse to the bottom of my container that I soak them in, whether it's a jar or whatever. It'll probably be a jar or something. But what I'll do is once these settle to the bottom of the jar or container, it'll be time to put these in secondary and it'll have that bourbon flavor infused in the chips. And that will leach into the beer and make for this awesome bourbon profile we're going for with these oak chips. So anyways, just had to throw that in there real quick. You guys? Just over the strike temp, 159 point, whatever. Let's mash in. And uh, we'll be doing this about, I said 154, we're actually mashing this at 152. So when, by the time I add all the grains to kill the heat here, I think it should drop uh, pretty quick, actually. That's just how it goes. So let's mash in.
And I like to let it drain out as we go here. Take some of the stress off the hoist. And you can hear it draining. Yeah, it's like one big. This looks interesting. It's like a big cake in there. Let's <laughs> get a close up on this. Go ahead and hoist it up again. Alright, put my jig clips in. And what I want to do actually is I want the basket to sit. Actually, I want it to sit angled this way. I don't even want to put all three clips in. I just want to put them in enough to where I can sit the basket in at an angle. What I was saying is I want to angle this basket. Just like so. We'll get the camera in over here. Like that, you see, like it really <laughs> turned into like a cake in there. It's funny. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrape around in here. See if we can loosen up some more trapped moisture. I know people always say, man, that uh, oh, don't squeeze the grains, you'll get tannins or whatever, but. And that ain't been my case. I have never had that issue. So, I'm gonna keep doing what works for me. And others can do whatever works for them. But yeah, I also thought about keeping this grain and using it to make bread. Because apparently you can do that. But, I don't know. Bread's so cheap these days when, well I mean, right now. <laughs> Depends on what bread you buy, but I'd probably make dog treats with it if I did anything, you know. So I'm gonna let that just kind of that's pretty well squeezed up. I'm gonna let that sit and continue to drip a little bit, and then we will take this basket out and uh, continue with the boil. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the grain basket, take it outside, and then we're gonna get this. Bad boy ramped up to a boron, and we'll also check our pre boil volume here. Sitting right about seven and a half. So we're on the money where I was hoping to be. Because I'm going to get about 1.5 gallon boil off on this, even at a 60%. So that's going to put me down. Uh, we got seven and a half, 1.5, that's. Uh, so I'm giving about 5.5 final. So, just rock and roll. Right now I don't have a switch for my vent fan. I just have my power cord here. I'll just get under the table and plug it in. Simple, keep it simple, right? Eventually I'll get a little controller for it, but apparently you gotta be careful which switches you buy because the, uh, it can damage the motor on your fan if it's like not the right, if it's a cheap one. If you want to get a good switch, and I'm, I'm still shopping those. All right, got the ducts on. Got some good airflow going already here. I'm gonna suck up and go out and blow outside and pull all the steam out of this room. It's already getting steamy just from the mesh. So uh, all my windows are all fogged up right now. So uh, we'll get back once we're out of oil, but uh, let's take a look at the work, huh? And oh, before we move on, I need to get a work sample. Put it on my 
refractometer here to squirt the rest back in there. And right now, pre boil gravity, we are looking at 1.048. Ten forty-eight. That's that's the thing. That's good. Let me see what the Bruce Beersmith says. I'm supposed to have on this. So uh, Beersmith says I'm supposed to have a ten forty-two. I'm at ten forty-five. We're in, we're in, we're on the money. Uh, actually, beyond the money. For a brewing of access on this thing has actually been pretty fantastic. I mean, they say seventy percent efficiency, but. Uh, I don't know, so I've been double crushing my grains and I don't know if that's it because the reason why I've been double crushing is uh, I feel it increases efficiency and also um, I'm using a very fine mesh bag or grain basket for this that they give you. So you can you can crush your grains really muddy if you want and it still stays in the uh, basket and doesn't end up in the actual kettle. So. I'm a fan of that. And the grandfather was more coarse. This is more fine. And uh, yeah, I'm crushing. I'm crushing it real. I mean, the roller is about as close as it can get. And I double crush, and we're getting some pretty good numbers every time I do this uh, boil. And every beer on this system so far, even though I've complained about temperature fluctuation there. It actually didn't do too bad on this beer. It stayed pretty close. Um, guys, I did run an auto-tune earlier today, and I think I might just do auto-tunes before every brew, just because I don't brew enough. I don't know if the system forgets or what. But, um, my beers have been fantastic on this system. I am better than the Grandfather's. I hate, I mean, I was a grand, Grandfather fan, but my beers are coming out pretty awesome on this, so let's get in on this. All right, guys, there's our beautiful beer. Got some beautiful color to it here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw my hot spider in. Fantastic looking. Take my trusty hot spider and. We'll just toss it in here. Well, here. And that's where I'll put all my wonderful hops, because I need to. All right, guys, we're at a boil. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my first ounce of Brewer's Gold. And that'll boil for 60, and we'll set a timer for 55 minutes, and we will add our, um, actually, we'll set a timer for 45 minutes, and then we'll add the yeast nutrient, and then five minutes before flame out, we will add the um, last hop addition. So just admire that boil for a moment, if you will. how it uh, boils it does like a pulse it's pretty cool to watch it just it just kind of pulses that element um, which is perfect so uh, yeah guys we'll check in, in a little bit This uh, nutrient capsule. Just, they say to empty the contents and just drop these in. So I'll just drop them in. I guess they dissolve. <laughs> so I got 10 more minutes and we'll add the next hop edition. Alright, guys, here's our five minute Brewer's Gold one ounce hop edition. Five minutes left and we'll be done with this. Hi right, guys, time to kill the um, boil. We're done. As simple as hitting the heat button. <laughs> so I'm gonna get this all chilled down 
and not bore you with the chilling process and get this in the fermenter. And then we're gonna get it hooked up to the stasis glycol shiller that I have under the table here. So I'll get back to you after we get all that hooked up. The brew's done. Five hours later almost. Um, mainly because uh, the cleanup took me a while. It always takes me a while with this system. Just the way the hoses are arranged. I gotta come up with a more, a different way for these hoses to run and everything. Like I'm thinking about building like a, something that will like hook onto the table and then I can bolt the pump onto that versus having the pump on the floor moving it around and everything and then I can shorten my hoses and everything. That way it'll be easier for me to disconnect hoses and empty them and everything. Um, and I may actually, I know I've said this, I've said this before, but I'm, this plate chiller, it works well and it works fine. It's just kind of a pain. Um, I kind of like counterflow more and it's just because the counterflow you can set it on something, just hook a hose and the hose and that's it. This, um, this is kind of a pain because it falls over and um, this particular chiller, I bought this plastic, I've kind of put a piece of this together because it's two males. Uh, so you'd have to have like a screw on hose in here and a screw on here and naturally your hose to your home, hose bill on your home has a female that screws onto a male on your home. So you think that water in would have been like a female input that just kind of, you know, hooked to a male hose, but that's not the case. So this thing works great. The chill, the worked, but it, I, it's on the floor, water, I get water on the floor all the time from using this thing. And I know in a brewery, you're going to get water on the floor, you're going to make spills, but I like to keep it to a minimum if possible. And I didn't spill near as much with the counter flow that I have for the grandfather versus this plate chiller. I would, I see more value in a counter flow chiller um, in that regard just because I can set the counter flow on something and just hook hoses to it and, and just rock and roll with it. So I may look into doing something like that. Um, we'll see. Anyways, the beer came out to 1056 uh, gravity. I was supposed to get 1055. So I'm a point over, I'll take it. So, <clears throat> and I have the beer in the fermenter. I pitched the yeast already and it's sitting and resting with the stasis keeping it at a nice 65 degrees. Wanna see? So there she is. All set up with the Blickman cooling coil in it and my homemade jacket. And then uh, you'll see it's actually at 64 degrees. Now I am gonna kick the heater on in this room uh, because this room will get very cold. I mean, it is well insulated, the room is, but it's winter time and even homes get cold if you don't kick the heater on. But yeah, it's doing good, man. It's at 64 right now. I've got it set to 65, USO4, or not USO4, SO4 prefers um, 58 to 69 or somewhere in here. I forgot, I don't have the label anymore, but I, I think uh, 65 would be a good spot for that. So anyhow, I'm gonna go over here. We're gonna go ahead and kick the heater on in here. We'll keep it about 70. It might be louder than it actually is on, because of the mic, <laughs> it might be blowing on the mic. But yeah, it's nice and warm already. You feel the warm air. This unit's been great. And I did buy an oversized unit for this building. Uh, this is a 10 by 12 brew shed. Um, and so it doesn't have to run as hard and it's a 240 volt unit. So it, uh, it keeps, it uses, it's 
more energy efficient than using a 120, especially when it comes to heating. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've got plans to put shelves up. I've already ordered these shelf supports. I want to put a couple shelves on this wall. And I'm also going to put a deep shelf up here above the door, like an 18 inch out shelf that I can uh, keep deeper drawers and stuff like that up there that I store. But um, I still need to do something with these doors. Um, they're not super insulated. I mean, they're insulated, but it's just kind of ugly. I need to cover them. And uh, I also need to put some weather stripping around them. So I do lose some heat and cool through there. But as you see, that stuff on the doors is uh, actually inside the walls as well. So this is like a big igloo cooler, essentially. Um, floors are great, um, especially since I spill a lot. These vinyl floors, water doesn't really get through them. Um, that's been nice. Uh, so yeah, I'm very happy to have put these in because I had wood floor before and I hated getting the wood floor wet. And I think these will serve me well. So, uh, and then I can steam them and everything, which I'm going to do tomorrow. I just kind of lighten them over a cloth and wipe up all my wet spills. But typically I let everything dry in here, I vacuum, and then I steam the floors. So, anyways. Appreciate you joining me on this brew adventure again, and uh, we'll see how this beer turns out. I'm going to be soaking the oat chips now so that they're ready to go into the fermenter and maybe I'll show you guys me soaking them in the bourbon here as in this video as well, might as well, right? So stay tuned and uh, we will uh, go on to the step where I put bourbon, these wood chips um, in some bourbon and we will see how that goes. Yeah, I'm excited, man. Uh, this will be the first time I brewed a bourbon barrel stout. I've always bought them, but to brew my own, that's going to be fantastic. So, anyways guys, um, I'll get back to you here shortly when uh, I put the oat chips in some bourbon. Cheers. Alright guys, the beer has been fermenting for a couple of days. It's, you know, the fermentation tank takes three weeks, so it's time to get the bourbon on the oat chips. Um, so this is my first time ever doing a bourbon barrel stout, so this is going to be fun for me. I hope it's enjoyable for you to watch uh, and going through this first time with me on here. And what do you think of my shirt? <laughs> my wife got it for me. Uh, <laughs> it's the most wonderful time for a beer. I love this shirt. It's awesome. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, zoom in here and do this uh, oak chip soap with some uh, Jim Bean straight whiskey, bourbon. I didn't want a sour mash, so that's went straight. And then uh, we're also going to use our oak chips here to soak in. So I'm gonna bring you the, bring the camera on in and then you guys watch me do this. Okay, as I said earlier, the idea, you know, when you make these, when big breweries do these uh, stouts, they, they use old whiskey barrels um, that uh, whiskey is aged in to absorb the oak, oak barrels. And when they're done with them, a lot of breweries will buy those barrels and then they'll put their beers in them and let them age in those beers. And what happens is that whiskey flavor uh, and the oak flavor kind of absorb into the beer, giving you that whiskey barrel flavor. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do the homebrew version. We're gonna try and mimic that. So I'm gonna put the chips in first, and uh, then we'll put the whiskey in. So I don't wanna waste too much whiskey. I want some for later for myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Of course you know. Always something challenging about these packages. Okay, there we go. I kind of smell them. Oh, this smells like wood. Just some oak chips. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in this container here. Just kind of scatter them about. What this will also do is a lot of people, you know, when you put foreign objects in your beer while it's fermenting, you risk what's called a uh, infection. That's where you introduce wild yeasts and bacteria into your beer. 
um, and it causes your beer to get infected and get all kinds of off flavors. Well, we don't really have to worry about this because by the time these chips go into the beer, they're going to be super sanitized from the alcohol and the bourbon. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. We're going to pour it in enough to cover. I'm going to fill it up until these chips are super soaked in. And we want to soak them enough that they, uh, we can see them float. Because what's going to happen here, okay. We go ahead and cover it. it smells delicious, man. I love a good bourbon. Um, see how they're kind of floating around in there? Apparently when these get real soaked, they'll just kind of sit to the bottom uh, when they're super soaked. So I'm gonna let this sit and soak in here in the brewery um, for, for for as long as I need to. Um, at least two, probably one to two weeks. And then uh, what'll happen is like last week, I'm gonna put this in the fermenter and then I'm gonna let it sit in the secondary stage in the fermenter for two weeks. So we get some good bourbon flavor and everything in the beer along with that oak flavor. So yeah. We got this stage going, and um, so let me bring the camera back up. So, we're done with that. Um, beer's fermenting great. It's behind the camera there. I'll show you it here in a moment. It smells good, man. This whole shed just smells like a fermenting beer, and it's a good type of ferment smell, not like a lager, which smells kind of uh, sulfury. This uh, is just a regular ale style fermentation, so it smells so good. It just makes the whole room smell like a brewery in, in a good way. And uh, so yeah, the I put the, that yeast, I don't know if that yeast nutrient had anything to do with it, but this beer kicked off uh, fermenting pretty quick. So this, is, this video is gonna be a little different than my other ones because I'm not gonna actually edit this video down until I have all the footage together, um, at least not to the bottle part or the keg part, but I am going to video like adding the oak chips to it and everything because I feel like it's kind of a crucial part of this video and part of this beer. So anyways, stay tuned and we'll, the next step here will be um, we'll be adding these whiskey chips to the fermented port. Alright guys, um, so this is the last segment of this brewing video. We have had these um, oak chips soaking in whiskey for about a week and a half or so. Look at that. They are completely just soaked up. They're ready to go into the fermenter, into the secondary stage here. I've actually had the stout fermenting for two weeks now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to filter out the chips here in this uh, sanitized, Screen. Um, you don't have to actually sanitize this because the chips have got so much alcohol in them. They're pretty sanitary already. But I'm just doing it because I can. Why not? So we're going to take these chips and we're going to pour them into this bowl. And if you have to use your hands, use your hands. Obviously, I'm going to have to use my hands. Just gonna knock these chips into the bowl. Just like so. Now I'm gonna keep the bowl over here because I'm using it for uh, draining purposes. Look at that, man. All that flavor in those oak chips. I'm gonna move them here, let them drain off for a minute. We're gonna move over to the fermenter and put these oak chips into the uh, fermenter. Okay, I've already unlatched the uh, lid to the fermenter here, so I'm just gonna move it over. The beer is actually done fermenting as far as like creating alcohol and everything. But this is kind of going through a uh, clarifying stage right now. So what we're doing now, is we're just gonna let those chips sit in there and they'll sink to the bottom as they saturate. 
in the brew. And uh, so I'm just gonna let this sit for two weeks on these bourbon chips. I'm going one additional week um, on this uh, versus a three week standard fermentation. I just wanna give the flavor profile really time to kind of set in with these bourbon soaked chips. So I'm just going to move the fermenter back under my table. All right, so we got the bourbon chips in the fermenter. Like I said, I'm gonna let it sit for two weeks and let that flavor really develop. And I got a whole bowl for a bourbon here, man. And we're not gonna throw this away. This is perfectly good bourbon. Those oak chips ain't gonna hurt it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna filter this through a cloth a little bit, get the rest of any wood fibers out of it. And, uh, or not a cloth, but like a coffee filter. And this is good bourbon to have later. Oh yeah, that's good stuff, man. <laughs> so don't throw that bourbon away. And actually, in all honesty, if you were going to do back-to-back -back brews and you wanted to do some more bourbon soaking, you could set that bourbon aside and soak in another batch of wood chips. So, but for me, I'm not going to do that because the next beer I'm going to do is going to be a Bach. So, I'm just, or actually, it's a my it's a my Bach, M-A-I-B-O-C-K, and I won't need the chips for that or the bourbon. So, I'm going to keep the bourbon for these cold winter nights coming up here in January, huh? So, cheers everyone. I appreciate you sticking around and watching through this whole brewing video. Um, we will do a taste video here once this beer has had time to set in and age and condition in the keg. But man, it's going to be good. I know it's going to be good. So, cheers everyone. Stay safe. And I'll see you soon.